Namaste. <laughs> this is such powerful magic, what we're doing here. I mean, the news, I, I feel like I just won the lottery, okay? <laughs> but the news is that um, an officer in the armed forces of a certain country has contacted me and wants to contract my services to train his men in iron shirt qigong. <laughs> so he he's like an inspector, you know. He goes to different different uh, bases and stuff and inspects. Uh, so all he has to do is say, um, you know, these guys aren't combat ready, they need to do some supplementary training. That's where I come in, okay? So I'm offering my services basically free, just for like, uh, you know, room and board, practically speaking. And I take care of all my travel expenses and so on like that, right? What's not to love about that arrangement? And he's also, of a similar taste. So that's the important thing. I'll be on his personal staff. See? So he and I will be training partners. The Iron Shirt Qi Gong requires a partner. You can't do it really alone. I mean, I do a solo practice that kind of keeps my toes in the water, you know, but it's not really the full practice, and the full practice can only be done with a partner. So, Iron Shirt Qigong, um, to teach the uh, uh, broad number of students, uh, broad number of men, large number of men, <clears throat> in a class situation, you teach the external teachings like the horse stance, pumping, you know, rising and falling with the breath, the uh, various arm movements, and, you know, lotus hands and cloud hands and all that stuff. And uh, then you see some of the students are talented. They're getting it. You, so you invite them to an advanced class, which is much more hands-on, the way we described. So in this way, the troops would be more uh, fit, more ready for combat, they'll have more energy available, they'll be more intelligent, more brave, huh? like that. You see, this is why the Iron Shirt techniques were kept alive by martial lineages. Not so much the religious lineages. So the Shaolin became the, uh, the uh, almost the sole inheritors of this, which was given to them by Damo, Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma was the 22nd, I think, 22nd patriarch in the Mahayana Buddhist lineage. And he left India and he walked barefoot over the Himalayas, <laughs> like through Nepal and like that, to China. And when he arrived in China, when he came inside the wall, the emperor was there to greet him. That's how important Bodhidharma was. So Bodhidharma wound up at Shaolin. It's a funny story how he got there too, but we'll skip that for now. Bodhidharma at Shaolin, he sat for seven years facing a wall. And this is the origin of the Zen tradition, or as it's known in China, Chan. 
So the Chan tradition, the Zen tradition, is a very tough discipline. Uh, but because the monks at Shaolin previously had been Taoist, they had cultivated martial arts. So after mature contemplation, Da Mo, as he's known in China, Bodhidharma as his Indian name, he wrote two books, one on mu called Muscle Changing Chico, and the other one called Tendon Stretching Chico. So in, if you do these exercises, and combine them with Zen or Chan meditation, which is what Buddha called unstructured meditation. There's no program to it. Like, you know, in the Theravada tradition, the eight jhanas or bases of mental activity and concentration are, admit, are admittedly fabrications. because they set up a certain object for meditation, like unlimited space, unlimited consciousness, neither perception nor non-perception. See, these are, these are, are frames. Uh, they're views. And these views are adopted by an effort of will. So they are action. That means they create karma and so on, you see. So if, if the karma is that you go higher on the path, well, that's good, right? So the path begins at the lower chakras and it proceeds opening the blossoms of the chakras one by one until it reaches the top. <clears throat> the idea is to open the chakras fully in the beginning. And then you have the energy for the rest of it to take place and as a natural sequence. Right? It has to happen. You see, and this is why I say that Mrs. Ouyang Yu, uh, Madame Yu, as she was known in San Francisco, uh, gave me the seed of enlightenment because she gave me this Qigong. So, and then I researched later, and I found those books written by Da Mo. Uh, and they contained all the practices that I had independently discovered in my youth. So it all fit together very nicely, you know. I, I had confirmation bias or whatever. It still seemed like such a synchronicity that it was unavoidable. It was, it, I had to recognize it. I had to say, look, this is destiny. This is what I'm, I'm designed to be. This is what I was born to be. So anyway, I have found one uh, influencer, one important man in the organization <clears throat> who can say, okay, you study with this guy. You get trained by this guy. And for people of the same taste, we can go even deeper into it, you know, so we're going to do that. So this is a very, very uh, wonderful break, breakthrough for me. It's, uh, it's the kind of magic that I have needed to create in my life for a long, long time. And I just wasn't sure of the precise form. Is it going to wind up being like, a seminar or, you know, I'm going to have to go to the West or, you know, what, what am I going to have to do to bring my reality out into the social level and share it with others? So now finally we have a breakthrough. We have an opening. Yeah. In fact, breakthrough, that's the name of the, the uh, I Ching hexagram that I got when I did a reading on this opportunity, breakthrough. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, 
I was going to do a uh, explanation of the seven levels of orgasm. Uh, I guess I'll have to do that next time. I'm too busy just uh, feeling fabulous about <laughs> what's happening. So uh, I'm going to take some time off. I'm going to be offline in August. So you won't hear much from me from for August. Uh, and I'll be probably back in September. Uh, the end of this month is going to be hectic for me too, so I probably won't be posting too many videos, but one or two more. I just want to finish the, uh, the concept behind Secret Heaven. Uh, so it looks like Secret Heaven is going to get its first test in the real world. <laughs> See how the method uh, affects other people and uh, well it's based on Chinese Buddhism you know so it can't be all wrong even if it's half right it's worth the effort but for me it's been all right uh, because it's aligned with my taste my core taste so you know the people who are uh, how can I say the people who enlist in the armed forces, you know, they have certain drives. Uh, they're trained for a fight. They're expecting a fight. That's their duty, isn't it? To step up when there's a fight. So they have a certain nature or a certain uh, integrity that they have to feel that they're ready. They're prepared for anything that can happen. So this kind of training appeals to that mentality because it's one of those things like, well, what if you're, what if this happens? What if you're captured? What if you, what if you're interrogated? What if this, what if that? You have to be ready for that. You have to be ready for uh, situations of danger and stress far beyond the ordinary, normal day-to-day -day level. So this training really helps for that. This gives you a, uh, like a baseline. It has for me. I've been doing a lot of solo work, uh, training, solo training. And uh, so this has helped bring this energy into existence as well. So I'm doing from my side, you're doing from your side, hearing these videos and then Imagining in your mind, you know, <laughs> what kind of a crazy life I have, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, that thought form, the energy from that thought form helps to bring it into manifestation. And so that's what we've been doing here, and it's working. So I'm very pleasantly surprised. I'm very happy. Um, these things are never for sure, you know. It also has to have the karma to back it up. It also has to be the season in your life. And of course, I have good astrological consultations. So um, this is the kind of thing that I'm expecting at this time in my life. I'm sort of living life backwards in a way. You know, most kids in high school, junior high school are very, very social. They're very conscious of their social prestige, reputation, connections, and so on. In the high school, I was completely antisocial, or asocial. I mean, I had a, there was a kind of a group of nerds who got together every once in a while, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really, it was just a bunch of loners who <laughs> hung together out of desperation. We didn't really have much uh, shared interests, you know. Uh, we, yeah, we'd go bowling and stuff like that, but there were no, no real heart-to-heart -heart conversations coming out of that group or anything like that. No real deep understanding. That I got from the musicians, believe it or not. So, but the point is, I was asocial or antisocial in my early life, and now I'm becoming very social. It's like the thing that most people go through in their puberty, I'm going through in my old age. This is so weird, huh? It's like backwards. 
but actually it's not so uh, difficult to understand because I've always been preoccupied with self-realization. So every time I got an opportunity to do something else, you know, to explore my tastes in whatever, I would weigh it and say, well, is this more important or is self-realization more important? And of course I would choose self-realization. So I passed on a lot of opportunities looking back, you know. Uh, so now I'm not so preoccupied, I'm very satisfied with my state of self-realization. So, um, you know, and if you go back and you listen to some of the earlier videos here, uh, you'll find out what I mean by that. Uh, that I attained pretty much everything that I had intended to from a very early age, and even more. So I'm very gratified, I feel very blessed, you know. But I still have to live my life according to my nature. The nature of this body, the nature of the karma attached to it and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, finish out my destiny with no uh, other interest beyond it. Just experience it fully and uh, then it will be done, right? Om Tat Sat Buru Saranai